presentation. You're crazier than I am. <laughs> Do you want to? Whoa, what a mob of people we got here this morning. We've got the overflow down Studio B downstairs. Oh. Every, everybody is here for the big wedding this morning, and I want you to know, honest and truly, ladies and gentlemen, I've been show business all my life, but I'll tell you something. I'm just scared to death this morning because <laughs> I know how many people out there watching for this wedding, and I'm scared and I'm shaken. And wait till you see what's going to happen here this morning. This is the most beautiful, the youngest group we've ever had on this television show. Oh, mercy. Gordy. Oh, look at Neesville. Well, I can't believe that. Even that old fire department auxiliary doesn't look too bad. Hey, listen, you went to a lot of trouble to make this dog on it. You really did. Oop, my pants ripped. You really did, and I'm very appreciative. And look, and I think anybody who come all the way from Indianapolis and make that, there's our great big ocean. Let's go. Let's say hello to our little sweetheart, Colleen Sharp. Let's say hello. And I don't know. Bonnie will be here. Oh, Bonnie Lou will be here, as will Vivian Della Chiesa, uh, B uh, Bobby Braun, Marion Spellman, uh, Rosemary Kelly, and Tom Atkins. And the wedding will get... Just hang in there. I'm milking this till the very last minute. <laughs> I want you to take a look at this beautiful six-tier wedding cake. Gorgeous. Is this a gorgeous thing, girls? Uh, <laughs> Buskin Bakery. Buskins Bakery, who have locations at Madison and Edwards, Hyde Park Square, Norwood, Marymount, Milford Shopping Center, Cherry Grove, Kenwood and Pleasant Ridge. This was designed by Joan Spade, is that right? And the value of this cake, girls, is $85. Oh, my. Look and at the corn. What? Look at the corn on Yeah, can you get that, Gordy? Are you getting that little corn on here? Corn and, the wheat. and it says here, uh, baked and decorated by Buskin Bakery. And everything here, and look at the little chickens on top and the two wedding rings, and everything here is edible. We're taking this over to the Lookout House tonight for our reception. Oh, we have more cake for you, don't worry. And incidentally, speaking of that uh, reception at the Lookout House tonight, the reception for the wedding party is by invitation only. But Colleen and Bonnie and I and the rest of us, we're all gonna be milling around. Why don't you all come over to the Lookout House tonight? Ah, uh, come on. We'll be there. We'll, we'll be there from uh, around 5 o'clock until 7. So come on over one and all and say hello. And, of course, uh, the chickens will be there. Uh, Pauline and Harry will be there. And you're going to be there. And you're going to be dead tomorrow. No, I am not. Uh, everybody in this whole area, drive over to the lookout house. We'll see you over there at 5 o'clock tonight. We'll have a ball. And then that's where we're going to give away the cake over there. That. Now, yeah. Now, we got some other cake here, too. Now, I don't know what this... This comes from the Ridge Flower Shop to Pauline and Harry. Uh, uh, bend down. Bend over. And uh, <laughs> you dirty old cameraman, you watch yourself. I'm getting a shot. I'll sit down over here. Slide over. Uh, you can do it, can't you? Not 
gracefully. Oh, wait. Now, wait a minute. I'm going to get the back. Congrat... Oh, that's... This is not a cake. These are all flowers. Congratulations to Pauline and Harry. Bobby uh, Cook. Bobby Cook sends this, and that's all flowers. Would you believe that? Well, that's beautiful. Well, now, let's save that, Alice. Take that, will you? And, uh, here, you're not doing anything. Hold that. Uh, well, you're just sitting there. And then here, I don't... This also, what, what this is... Like, can't you bend down and hold? Colleen, you ain't no good at all with that dress on. I know it. What? I know. Wait no, a minute. Just Wait pull a... it off. There. Well, go ahead. Let all me... right. It says... Uh... It says the honeymoon coupe for rent. Can you see this? That's unbelievable. Colleen and Harry, we, we rented this suite for you. Uh, who's that? Nene and Herman? Oh, Nene and Herman. That's Nene <laughs> DeCorsi, God love her, and Herman. Oh, really? And Joby and Polly. Well, uh... Joby... You know, Joby DeCourcy, Joe DeCourcy is our uh, Hamilton County Commissioner here. Right. Yes, them. now and, I know. And Joe, uh, Joby, God love him, uh, suffered a heart attack. You might have read about this uh, in uh, Washington, D.C. while he was there. Oh, yes. And, but he's back home now, and he's feeling good, and everything's going to be fine. So, Joe, we're glad you're back. And, uh, Polly, you take good care of Joby today, you hear? And we're, seriously, we're glad that our County Commissioner is Look back. Joe DeCourcy. See how, it's, see how it's spelled? For rent, F-O-U-R. No, honey. Oh, honeymoon. Oh, H-U-N-N-I-E. Yeah. Very good. Coop. Very good. Isn't that beautiful? Well, I'll tell you, we've got a lot of other things. And don't forget now, if you haven't seen her or not, here is the mother-in-law of the bride and groom. <laughs> Boo! Uh, here's, here's the babysitter. Here's the babysitter. <laughs> Jay Leno is moving to 10 o'clock on WLWT5. Hey, Cincinnati, new comedy every week night at 10, followed by News 5 at 11 with Cherie. It's everything you love about Jay, only at an earlier time. Only $4.29 for a meat load dinner. <laughs> <laughs> then stay after Jay for News 5 at 11 for news that's straight to the point and won't waste your time. New comedy every week night at 10, followed by your local news. Jay Leno at 10, News 5 at 11, starting September 14th. In our town, fall means football. From high school stands to big league stadiums. And Gold Star Chili is celebrating with $5 Bengals combos. A three-way and a drink for $5. Or two cheese conies, chips and a drink for only $5. $5 Bengals combos, only at Gold Star Chili. Official chili of the Cincinnati Bengals. Gold Star Chili, this is Cincinnati flavor. Gold Star Chili, the flavor of Cincinnati. Register to win the all-new 2010 Chevy Camaro today from your participating Tri-State Chevy dealers. The Chevy Camaro offers sleek new features and great fuel efficiency. And best of all, it could be yours. There are three ways to register. Fill out the registration form in the August Reach magazine or go to your participating Tri-State Chevy dealers or register at trichevy.com. Hurry, registrations must be received by 9909. It's the great Chevy Camaro giveaway going on now. When you're out running around this weekend, don't be surprised if you run into some amazing values during the Value City Furniture Labor Day half-off sidewalk sale. Discover huge savings inside and out on fine home furnishings, plus overstocks, one of a kind, and special purchases like this leather sofa and matching love seat. Pay just $6.99 for the two and get the matching chair free. Plus, enjoy no payments or interest for 12 months. Relax during the Labor Day half-off sidewalk sale going on now at Value City Furniture. Sharefax Credit Union is getting ready to turn 50, and we need your help. We're calling on your creativity to help us make a 50th anniversary commercial. All entries must be 30 seconds or less, and the grand prize winner receives $2,000 and a flip video camera. Plus, you might see your commercial air on WLWT5. To enter, go to sharefax.org, fill out the official entry form, and mail it in with your DVD submission. All entries must be received by November 16, 2009. For official rules and details, please visit sharefax.org. Right now at Penn Station, get any fresh grilled chicken choice meal at our monthly special price. Because at Penn Station, we're chicken and proud of it. This is Cliff Lush, uh, Lash, 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 of the 5050 Club uh, Orchestra. And, uh, you know, I'm very... All together. I You're fine. You look good. Time. Yes, sir. Everything all right? Why? Well, I, I didn't get the call at 8.30, you see. I, and I wasn't I dressed know. or anything. But I want you to know how much all of us appreciate... What is this? Well, some lady made this for me. <laughs> 
Uh, I want you to know how much all of us appreciate your coming down here this Not, morning. What do I do? You? Well, you know the show backwards. You watch every morning. I know I do, Paul. But, uh, <laughs> don't get the but you don't anything. I don't get we up have, at 9 o'clock. I know. We had all the wedding. Re Wait a minute. I'm not through with you yet. Stay over here. We had all the wedding rehearsed. Uh, with Bruce and all, but you can play I some I can play music. Here Comes a Bride. Well, things like that. And Vivian Delicatessen, uh, Vivian Delicatessen is going to sing. What, she sings. I, she's singing, uh, 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 what is Vivian singing? I love you truly. And I know that. Do you? And Marion Spell, and, and Marion Spellman is, uh, uh, Marion Spellman is singing, I'm only a bird in a gilded cage. <laughs> and Bobby Braun ain't singing. <laughs> he's, well, he's going to be the best man. And Marty is here. Marty, have you ever met Clifford? Marty, are you here yet? Oh, she's all, well, come on out here, real quick. I want you to meet Clifford. Uh, hurry up, Marty, you can leave your, see, she's got her bridesmaid hat on. You may say hello. This Cliff Lash is uh, Oh, this, are all the bridesmaids wearing yes. those? Huh? Yes. <laughs> Mine doesn't fit my head, though. It what, honey? My head's too big. Is it? Well... <laughs> I never looked at her head, did you, Reverend? Well, honey, well, won't it... Well, can't that spread that a little bit? I can't. My hair is, you know... Is too heavy and yeah, thick? Yeah, well... All right. Mm -hmm. well, Does it look all right? Too, I think it's going to look lovely. Now, Colleen, have you got yours? Have you got yours like this? All there is... Yes, right. Uh -huh, I have mine. <laughs> hers is just like this. Is it just mm -hmm. like that? Very good. Well, don't you think that's going to look good, girls? Yeah. Very good. All right, Marty, we'll see you later. Hang in there, old girl. <laughs> Cliff? Cliff? Where'd you go, Cliff? Oh, all right. Hey, seriously, thank you very much for coming in, really. Yeah, I look like Bruce. You look like oh, Bruce. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> you know what they're going to do? Uh, well, go ahead. Here is Cliff Lush in the orchestra, and we're sorry that Bruce doesn't feel good, but he is sick, and he can't stay, and uh, when you're sick, you're sick. So uh, uh, he tried. Yeah. You ready to go? You, can you read music, Cliff? Well, these aren't my glasses. That's oh, aren't they? <laughs> these are Bruce's glasses. <laughs> can you see what's going on there? Yeah. <laughs> First time in a long time I can see the music. Is that right? <laughs> Uh, what's the name of this thing you're opening up with? It's, uh, Get me to the church on time. Well, follow it. Now, this is for Pauline and uh, Harry. Get me to the church on time. Let's roll it. Oh, we'll never make it. Look at the time.
Sports and WLWT.com. Go to our homepage and click on Sports for all the latest scores and highlights. And check out our Mind and Muscle video segments sponsored by Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Watch weekly segments every Saturday morning during News 5's High School Playbook. You'll get great fitness tips from injury prevention to the latest in conditioning and stretching techniques. Mind and Muscle, powered by Beacon Orthopedics and Sports Medicine. Your parents have taken care of you for years, and now it's our turn to take care of them. With Family Bridges' experienced and compassionate home care options, we make it easy. You can interview potential caregivers in advance, so you can make a comfortable and confident choice. Our in-home care services include light housekeeping, meal preparation, hygiene assistance, transportation, and much more. Our goal is to provide the highest quality in-home care for your loved ones. Family Bridges, experienced home care you can trust. Since 1935, Schneider Home Equipment Company has been taking care of homes in the tri-state area. Our quality products and professional installations include roofing, siding, replacement windows, entry doors, patio enclosures, and much more. Plus, our windows and doors qualify for up to $1,500 in energy tax credits. Stop by our showroom, check us out on the web, or give us a call. Let our family take care of your family. Congratulations, you've just won 5 million Speedy Rewards points. 5 million points gets you lots of the great Speedway food and merchandise items you'd expect. Gift cards from great retailers, plus thousands of dollars in free gas. Who'd have thought this little card gives me so many rewards? We're on your way to convenience stores of Speedway. Burgers, dogs, and more. Why make an extra trip when you can choose anything from the grill or any hot sandwich? Two for just $2, only at Speedway. WLWT has a brand new way to get you great local deals. Log on to WLWT.com and click on Half Off Cincy to get discounted gift certificates to some of the Tri-State's hottest locations. Supplies are limited each week, so log on today. Friday's featured Half Off Cincy partners are Pompilios and Ferrari's Little Italy and Bakery. Go to WLWT.com Friday morning at 8 a.m. and click on Half Off Cincy to get your Half Off gift certificate. Supplies are limited, so don't miss your chance for these off- the other member of the Dixon Show, she, she really got her wires crossed this morning. She was supposed to be here early, but God love her, but she's, she just got here. Why don't you welcome Bonnie Lou?
you think? Uh, let I me. I couldn't sleep all night. That's why I look like I do. Well, listen, because I. Because you're gonna lose Pauline. <laughs> why? Well, it's really gotten to her friends. It uh, has. Has it really? <laughs> Hasn't it to you, Colleen? <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you, honey? Ja, ja. Well, wait a minute. I want to show you our fabulous lineup. Get that thing out of the way. Bonnie, I want to take you for a little tour through our garden. Oh. You haven't seen it. Come on. Can't you give me some background music over there, Mr. Lush? Uh, look at this. Black. Look at this. This brings this. back memories, doesn't it, to you, Paul? Of my wedding day? Oh, yeah, let's get out of here quick. Ah, but isn't that beautiful? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Is Tom Atkins here yet? I'm waiting for Tom. He's the guy that goes going to do it. What? Mary and Don't say Ray that. Rosemary Kelly's going to interview all these celebrities out there. All right. Okay. Yeah. Let me. You're going to sing, Bonnie. Come on. Come on. You're going to do a number. You got to do a number. Do you know what? Do a number. Where are you going to stand? Where are you going to stand, Bonnie? Where? I have to You're stand here, of this. Yeah. and she stands by the roses, and I stand by the uh, ferns. Where's Marty going to stand? Uh, out here. Out where? <laughs> right, right, right. Oh, right there. Where's Roger and Iser going to stand? Right and Atkins is going to stand there. That's what it says. No, Marty stands here, and Roger's. Yeah, I was going to say because Marty couldn't stand there, and Atkins here. Uh, <laughs> 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 Isn't that something else? Oh dear. Well. I was waltzing with my darling to the Tennessee waltz when an old friend I happened to see. I introduced her to my loved one and while they were waltzing my friend stole my sweetheart from me. I remember I have lost Yes, I lost my little darling The night they were playing The beautiful Tennessee Wars I remember the night And the Tennessee Wars Only you know how much I have lost Yes, I lost my little darling The night they were playing The beautiful Tennessee It's beautiful, baby, beautiful. Used to be the same thing every year. Ants, ants in the kitchen, ants in the family room. They drove me nuts. I called Scherzinger Pest Control. Problem solved. Scherzinger Pest Control, protecting families like yours since 1934. Laser Craze, the ultimate laser tag with two great locations on Donaldson Road in Erlanger and just off I-71 at the Kings Island exit. It's out of this world fun, perfect for corporate team building, family celebrations, and the coolest parties in town. There are huge multi-level laser tag arenas and awesome laser tag systems. In Erlanger, try out the huge inflatables or Laser Craze to go. That's right, we'll come to you. The arcade is a great value with most games at just one or two tokens. And right now, it's all you can play laser tag on Saturday after 10 p.m. for just $10. It's all at LaserCraze.com. In times like these, you need a wireless company that you can count on and one that's affordable. That's Cricket. We're always looking to add value without adding to your bill, saving anywhere we can so we can pass along the savings to you. That's why right now you can get our $45 rate plan for even less. For a flat rate of just $40 a month, you get unlimited talk, text, pics, 411, and mobile web. You get all that plus national coverage included. Cricket has no contracts to sign or overages, and it's America's most affordable 3G network. Just call 1-800-354-5965, click mycricket.com, or come into a Cricket store today. Right now, for just a flat rate of $40 a month, you get all this without any overages. today and take another look at cricket and see how your wallet gets a little right now save $100 on the new touchscreen moto evoke just call click or come into a cricket store today get respect for your wallet 
cricket. In our town, fall means football. From high school stands to big league stadiums. And Gold Star Chili is celebrating with $5 Bengals combos. A three-way and a drink for $5. Or two cheese conies, chips and a drink for only $5. $5 Bengals combos, only at Gold Star Chili. Official chili of the Cincinnati Bengals. Gold Star Chili, this is Cincinnati flavor. Gold Star Chili, the flavor of Cincinnati. Pretty handy with most things around the house. Better rely on the SureSinger Pest Control Guardian Plus program. They use the Centricon system to protect our family from termites and pests. You can trust SureSinger Pest Control. We've been protecting families like yours since 1934. Are we ready? Ladies and gentlemen, the anchor man of WLW Television News, Mr. Tom Atkins. Tom, come on out here. Tom, it's a real pleasure to have you, a distinguished newsman, to come down and do the commentary on uh, the chicken wedding here this morning. Paul, we'll cover anything, anytime. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's the motto, I guess, of your news department, is it not, Tom? Uh, Seriously, Paul, it's a pleasure to be here. This is an auspicious occasion, and by the very nature of its significance, it is newsworthy, and if it's newsworthy, we sincerely want to be on the scene. Therefore, I am on the scene. <laughs> Everybody wants to be a comedian when they get on the show. Well, Tom, I'll tell you, we're gonna start this wedding in a minute, but before I do, I've gotta remind everybody that they're watching this show, and you're gonna be seeing this chicken uh, uh, wedding uh, here on WLWT in Cincinnati, WLWI in Indianapolis, WLWD in Dayton, and WLWC uh, in Columbus. Can't you feel an air of excitement? Is Vivian Delicatessen here yet? Is Vivian here? Well, she's gonna sing, I understand. I understand. Oh, yes. Do you know how you're going to introduce her? Yes, oh, a, bit later, a bit later, a, a bit later. You're on page two, you know. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh, I see. Yes. I, well, I'm putting on yes. And was Bobby Braun here? Is Bobby here? He passed me on the turnpike as we were coming down, so I'm sure he's in the area. Oh, I bet he is. But he ain't singing. Let me see. Uh, Marty's here. I saw all of her. Did you meet Marty? Yes, I did, Paul. And uh, I haven't had breakfast yet. And uh, <laughs> now, what I'm saying is that until I have breakfast. <laughs> if I were you, I'd just shut up. <laughs> if you have me at a distinct disadvantage. You're holding the microphone. Here, go ahead, hold it. <laughs> this is the only way I can finish my thought. All right. <laughs> Not having had breakfast, I am not really fully awake, and I want to apologize for that because when I met Marty, I said, hello, Marty, pleased to meet you, and walked away. <laughs> I don't get it. Well, actually, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and, I, and again, I say to you, if you tuned in late, that Bruce Brownfield took very sick this morning. Well, not very sick, but he's, he's ill. And Cliff Lash is helping us out. And Cliff, God love him, didn't go over any of this. And uh, uh, while Cliff is a fine musician and all, he doesn't really know what's going to happen here. But uh, we'll let it go at that. But we want to thank you, Cliff, again for coming down. And now I believe we're ready to start, are we not? I'm ready if you are, Paul. Well, I'm nervous, Tom. Listen, I've been tied up all night about this thing. Hey, I really? didn't sleep. Uh, I went over the script several times. I checked the facts. Yeah. And the facts are hard to believe. And... Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to straighten it all out for the people here as we begin this thing, though, and I have, think we're about ready. Do you have butterflies in your stomach, Tom? Oh, my, yes. Yeah, I do, too. You're well, going to be all right? I may join Bruce. You have a key role to play in this thing, you know. I'm marrying these dumb things. I know it. I know. Okay. Your first wedding you performed? Oh, yes, 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 yes. yes. Well, I know you'll do well. I'm, I'm sure. looking forward to it. Go, uh, yeah, have a cup of coffee or something. I'm going, I'm going to have no coffee, I'll tell you that. Okay. This is Tom Atkins speaking from the garden, where in a few moments... A chicken wedding is about to take place. <laughs> now, what makes this wedding so unusual, among a few thousand other things, is that these two chickens, Pauline and Harry, are rubber chickens, who through their appearance on The Paul Dixon Show have developed a romance leading to marriage. It all started one day when a member of the studio audience presented Paul Dixon with a rubber chicken. This was used as a gag, surprisingly enough, and was called the Kroger Chicken. Members of our studio audience and air audience insisted that it be clothed, and clothing began to arrive. And then it was decided it was time to name her. 
and Paul, for reasons best known to himself, decided to call her Pauline. <laughs> Clothing continued to arrive for Pauline and the situation was normal until someone sent her a boyfriend. And Paul, again for reasons best known to him, named him Harry. The romance grew and clothing for both the chickens continued to arrive. Six months ago, it was announced the wedding between Pauline and Harry would take place. And as soon as that announcement was made, wedding gowns, gifts, dishes, furniture began to pour in. Hundreds of items. Everything from bikinis to household appliances, beds, nests, even a getaway car. <laughs> and so we have arrived at the date, March 11th. The Paul Dixon Show is about to perform another first in television, a chicken wedding. This chicken wedding has created quite a commotion in the social world. A few chickens have had a lot to say. And so we switch you now to Rosemary Kelly, who is in the lobby to greet a few latecomers. Thank you very much, Tom Atkins. Yes, indeed. While many of our dignitaries have already arrived and I have taken their places in the formal garden setting, we are awaiting the arrival of a few invited guests that seem to be a little late in attending the wedding of the year. We would like to find out from them exactly how they feel attending a wedding that has received so much publicity, so much promotion that has done something <laughs> that nothing else has ever done like this for AFCO Broadcasting Corporation. We all feel it quite an honor to be a part of the wedding. And of course, you know, Miss Vivian Della Chiesa will be here to sing. Miss Marion Spellman will also render a selection at this wedding of weddings, the wedding of the year, we prefer to call it. Because when two chickens join in wedded chicken lock, it does something for one. We are very, very happy, though, to be a part of this. Don't and then, too much, Rosie. of course, in awaiting the mayor of Neesville, who will perform the ceremony, I understand he's quite nervous. And I see, oh, here, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Roger Neiser. How, How do you do, you? Roger? How do you do, Rosemary? Roger, as you may or may not know, is the uh, father of the bride. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Uh, Roger, where did you work before you attempted to become the father of the bride? I used to be sales promotion manager of the Kroger Company up until today. I see. I've, and been, <laughs> I've been spending so much time on the wedding that I finally got my walking papers this morning. I see. Well, how do you feel about giving away this chicken? Are you weak in the knees? I see you're dressed beautifully for the occasion. I really am. We've been planning on this thing for about six months, and I've really been looking forward to it. But now that the day has arrived, I am really nervous. Uh, well, I'm sure that that will subside in due time. Have you told the uh, bride all the facts of life as any good father does? We had a little meeting last night, and uh, I think she's well prepared. I see, Roger. Now, what are your future plans as a father of the bride? Where do you intend working after today? Well, right now I'm looking for a job. <laughs> Harry uh, has uh, made me an offer to uh, go into the restaurant business with him. We're thinking about starting a restaurant chain. I see. And what would the feature product be that you would sell? We're thinking about fried chicken and roast beef. Right. Thank you very much, Thank Roger. And be the here. best of luck to you. Thank you for stopping and talking with us. And we have more late arrival and honored guests. Here we have Miss Marion Spellman, who's going to render selection. Good morning, Mrs. Kelly. Good morning. Marion, if you don't look stunning in your hat, and again, the tears are welding up in your eyes. Well, you know how I am about farmyard people. I just, I really focus in, you know, and I keep thinking of those dear little things embarking on this road of matrimony out there in the nest. Well, Marion, try to collect yourself so that you can render a fitting uh, farewell to them after the wedding. It'll be rendered, I can tell you that. I know that it will. Next, we have Mrs. Elsa Sewell, who is, of course, a member of the 50-50 Club. Uh, I, I brought my sunglasses. I know, I always cry at weddings. Well, Elsa has her sunglasses so that the tear-stained eyelids don't show. Elsa, try to collect yourself for the wedding of the year. And next we have Miss Kathy Miller. Miller. And Miss Kathy Miller is a secretary here. And how do you feel, Kathy? Oh, this is just a great event. I'm glad to be here. Oh, <laughs> nice to have you. And next we have Mrs. Vivian Della uh, secretary. Hello. And what is your name? My name is Winnie Stum. Well, Winnie, so nice to have you. You best take your place. I know that we're awaiting the mayor of Neesville. He should be here momentarily. And your name? Carol Farrell. 
Carol, so nice to have you here today with us. And last but not least is our producer of 5050 Club, Mr. Dick Murgatroyd. Hi, Rosemary. How you doing? Fine, Dick. Good. And how do you feel about this wedding? Well, I'm all excited about it, like everybody else. Indeed, yes. Well, I do. I have been told that the mayor of Neesville, who's going to perform the ceremony, is on his I way think up. He's on his way. So prior to that, we will turn it back to Tom Atkins in the formal gardens. Everything, according to my agenda, is going about on schedule. And the agenda calls next in the garden area for Miss Vivian Della Chiesa. I love you truly, truly dear. Life with its sorrow, life with its When I feel you are near For I love you truly, truly dear Our love to something to feel your kind hand Ah, yes, tis something By your side to stand Gone is the sorrow Gone doubt and fear o'clock on WLWT5. Hey Cincinnati, new comedy every week night at 10, followed by News 5 at 11 with Cherie. It's everything you love about Jay, only at an earlier time. Only 4.29 for a meat load dinner. <laughs> <laughs> then stay after Jay for News 5 at 11 for news that's straight to the point and won't waste your time. New comedy every week night at 10, followed by your local news. Jay Leno at 10, News 5 at 11, starting September 14th. Find your solution at Foot Solutions. Whether you want instant relief to aching feet, knees, or back, improved balance and posture, better athletic performance, or great looking stylish shoes that actually fit your feet, the experts at Foot Solutions can help. From the best price custom arch supports to shoes for dress, work, or play, shop the Foot Solutions store nearest you. Come in today for a free scan and foot gait analysis. Foot Solutions in Montgomery and Westchester. Impeccable style, fresh new design, and all on sale. The Bassett Labor Day Sale, where all your favorites and fabulous new collections are at the very best prices of the year. Interest free until 2011. Plus, Bassett is offering cash for couches. Donate your old couch and save even more, up to $600 on beautiful custom upholstery. Special savings on bedrooms too. Dining, home office, entertainment, and more. The Bassett Labor Day Sale. Don't miss it. Right now at Penn Station, get any fresh grilled chicken choice meal at our monthly special price. Because at Penn Station, we're chicken and proud of it. Just in time for Labor Day. Big holiday offers at your Tri-State Chevy dealer. A great selection. Hundreds of new 09 Chevys. Malibu, Silverado, Tahoe, Cobalt, Traverse. Great model year-end deal. Big Labor Day selection. Take advantage of great money-saving offers on great Chevy vehicles. Now get financing as low as 0% for 72 months on select 2009 Chevy vehicles or other special financing on select 2009 Chevy vehicles. Visit TryChevy.com today. Hi, I'm Jimmy Gibson from Red. If you want to impress your friends at the next barbecue or just grilling out with your family, log on to WLWT.com Flavor of Five and check out the recipes. Log on to WLWT.com today.
Let WLWT.com and Monster find the job that's right for you. I've just received word that the mayor of Neesville has made an appearance, so let's switch once again to Rosemary Kelly in the lobby. Thank you very much, Time. Yes, indeed, enthusiasm is certainly prevalent this morning. Everyone is most excited, and I think it is the mayor of Neesville. <laughs> Sir, could you talk to us for just a moment Rosie, I'd like you go in? Rosie, I'd like to talk to you. The famous television audience would like to hear a few words. Well, Rosie, I'd like to talk to you, sweetheart. I'd love to talk to you, honey, but I've got a big thing going here, and I'll see you all later. You had hang right in there, Won't you please talk to us for just a moment? Well... Ladies and gentlemen, obviously the mayor of Neesville is most excited about the role, and a little discombobulated, I might add, about the role that he is going to play in this wedding of weddings. But while he's taking his place, I return now to the studio and the mayor of Neesville. <laughs> I presume you all think I know what I'm going to do now. You are all crazy. I don't know what I'm going to do now. But it's good to be here on this morning. We've waited a long, long time for this, and I think really, are you ready to go, girls? Or shall we get this thing started? I have the uh, marriage license here. Uh, everything is legal. Uh, everything is fine. And I think the first thing that we ought to do here this morning, after I look at my script, is to say that I think that we ought to, first of all, Introduce you now to the, to the groom, who is Harry Chicken. Let's have a nice big welcome for Harry. Will Harry please come up here? <laughs> Why are you laughing? And I think next, ladies and gentlemen, what we should do is introduce the best man at this wedding of Harry and Pauline. I present to you the star of the 50-50 Club, Mr. Robert Philip Peter Braun. <laughs> I want you to know how much I appreciate your taking the time and effort to get up this early to come down here and be the best man of the wedding of Harry and Pauline. I, I'm glad to be here, Paul. When do I sing? Oh, you ain't singing, pal. Uh, I, I have my own pantus to see. I, I saw Bruce last night and I slipped him a Mickey. I'd go to any end, wouldn't I? Huh? Is that what he did? He slipped Bruce a Mickey so it'd make him sick and now he's got his own. Are you a pianist I, or a pianist? I'm a pianist, always. But I know all of Bob's keys, so anything he wants to do, we're ready. Hey, Bob? Thank you, thank you, Pepper. You mean? <laughs> Is it in the script where I sing Paul? No, it's not. We didn't write you in here at all, but go ahead if you have to. Uh, <laughs> oh, promise me, Pepper. What are you going to sing? Oh, promise me. Oh, I can't stand that. Oh, <clears throat> go ahead. All right, Bobby, go ahead. I'll let you go. Do you know the key in that one, Cliff? <clears throat> don't, don't take me out of the picture while he's singing. <laughs> oh, promise me that someday oh, I you and I <laughs> will take our love together to some sky. <laughs> I didn't know he cared. <laughs> oh, God love you. Hey, oh, why, you smell good, too. Come here. Stand a little closer to me. One, one thing I want to know, Paul. You're always trying to upstage me, and you've got a riser that is three inches taller than mine. What, are you trying to make me look like a midget or something oh, this morning? Bob, you have to did you say hello to Harry. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Looks awful, doesn't it, huh? Well, all right, now, Bobby, you, you're here. You're the best man. Now, ladies and gentlemen, do we have music? Hi, Harry. <laughs> it's getting to him, too, friends. We have music now for the entrances of the madam, uh, the ma ma uh, matrons. <laughs> The matrons of honor. First, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Marty Aldis. May we have a little applause and some music. I 
guess I just made a mistake. Where do you know where to stand, Marty? I don't. I guess I made a mistake. Actually, Colleen and Bonnie Lou are supposed to enter there. Let's bring Colleen and Bonnie Lou. Bob, do you still believe this? Paul, tell you the truth, I won't even believe it when I see the rerun. Mm -hmm. I won't either, Bob. Be very honest with you, I won't. What kind of ring are they going to have? I don't know about that. Don't wait night to that part of the script yet. <laughs> Marty, are you all right? He, she sure is, yes. <laughs> well, wait a minute, Marty. You're not, everything's okay, isn't it? I'm fine, yes, everything's You certainly fine. are. What? Everything's wonderful. Oh, uh, good. <laughs> you're you're going to be the matron of honor, I guess. Uh, how come I, uh, you know, normally at certain weddings, Paul, the, the, the uh, best man and the maid of honor stand sort of side by side. You got me way here behind the thing. What is this? Well, there's not room for both of you on that side. <laughs> and oh. you girls, how do you feel about the whole thing? Oh, we're so, it's just <laughs> terrible. I just, I just love weddings. I just. I'll miss them so. What? I'll miss them so. <laughs> they, they just like sister and brother. Always said we're for the I birds. know, I know it. We have had them around here for a long time, haven't we? We dressed and undressed them little things a million times. I put her girdle and bra on 42 times. You enjoyed every little inch. What? You always said, boy, are you anxious? You always said that. That's what I always said. You remember that living bra she got the die? Yeah, I do. <laughs> well, we gotta do it. Let's call the whole thing off and keep them, shall we? Shall we keep them? Uh, oh, I'm getting sick. <laughs> Lady. <laughs> Now, ladies and gentlemen, we got everybody in here. Where's Rosemary Kelly? Well, she's not going to be in here, but, uh, but, but well, Roger nizer has got to come in. And we, ladies and gentlemen, I believe if we could have the proper music right now that I see in the back there, see if our bride is about ready. Our bride is ready. Let's bring, let's bring Pauline in. Here we go. Are you ready there with a camera slowly? Followed by Roger Neiser of the Kroger Company, who is giving the bride away. If you could just see behind this railing what I see, you wouldn't believe it. I'm going to get a picture behind there pretty soon. What'd you say, Bonnie? Roger, would you get a little closer to Marty, please? <laughs> Roger, you not only lost your job at Kroger, you've also lost your happy home if we ever get a picture of that. The photographers are now standing by taking pictures and get out of the way of my, uh, of my monitor there, will you please? Here we are. Roger, you and... Roger, do you take this girl to be... Oh no, you're not getting married, are you? No. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, may we all get serious. Friends, we have gathered together in the presence of this audience and all our sponsors to join together this hen, Pauline, and this rooster, Harry, in chicken-hearted matrimony. And I, as the mayor of Neesville, will now perform the ceremony. We will now proceed with a song by that eminent songbird, Miss Marion Spellman, ladies and gentlemen. Marion, if you will, please. Don't ham it up, Marion. Just sing, as only you can. Are you in key, my dear? <coughs> I love your hat. It was a special creation for the wedding, wasn't it, dear? Yes. Yes. I do you anything clean... for my little feathered friends. You cleaned that up from the barn, didn't you, dear? 
I'll never tell. Just don't get too near it. <laughs> She's only a bird in a gilded cage. A beautiful sight to see. You think she is happy and free from care? With her Harry there. Tis ah! sad when you think of those wasted years before her lover came along. along. And happy they'll stay. Oh, in the love with her egg she'll lay. She's a bird in a gilded. Now get in the get in the gear, kid. Get in the gear. Thank you, Marion Spellman. Thank you. Marion Spellman, as only she can sing. And now, <laughs> now you people ain't supposed to laugh in the audience. This is serious. Pauline and Harry. Stop shaking, you idiot. You got yourself into it. Pauline and Harry, I want to remind you that this marriage is taking place as a result of audiences and viewers of the Paul Dixon Show, who have forced us into marrying you two dumb chickens. If any person can show just cause why Pauline and Harry may not be joined together, then you'd better crow or cackle now or hereafter forever perch silently in your own corner of the yard. Yeah. Now shut up, you chicken back there. You ain't gonna have nothing to stop this thing now. We're going through with it. Besides, somebody's got a gun on my back. Harry! <laughs> Harry, you idiot, stand still. Will you have this chicken-hearted Pauline for your wedded hen? Will you love her, comfort her, keep her in sickness and in health, and promise not to ruffle her feathers as long as you both shall live? <laughs> <laughs> and Pauline, Pauline, will you take this questionable rooster, Harry, to be your wedded rooster, to keep an eye on him? Will you love him and promise not to make him live in that damn <laughs> basement? <laughs> Come on, kid, do something. Don't just, don't just stand there, say something. They got to rerun the tape. <laughs> I wonder where Lou's going to wonder where Lou's going to be working tomorrow. All right. Who gives this chicken to be wed? I do. <laughs> well, shut up and kiss me. I thought you were mine. Her mother and I. Her mother and I. Thank you, Mr. Nizer of the Kroger Company. For as much as Harry the Rooster and Pauline the Hen have consented together in chicken-type wedlock and have placed their faith in the Kroger Company to support them, I, as mayor of Neesville, now pronounce they are husband and wife. Those who John Murphy and the Avco Broadcasting Corporation have joined together, let no man put asunder. Hey! Hey! Throw the rice. That's enough rice, that's enough, that's enough. No more rice. Oh, no more rice will fall down. That's enough, no more. Alice, that will be leaving too. Uh, now, Harry, Harry, you may peck your bride. <laughs> Pauline, you may peck him back. That's getting sickening. Both of you stand up.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, the wedding has been concluded, and Pauline and Harry will now leave arm in arm with Roger Neiser and Marty and the wedding party. Slower. We got plenty of time. Slower, you idiot. Marty's the one in blue. <laughs> All right, Marion. Marion, you may now follow Bobby, if you will, please. But I haven't sung yet. But I haven't sung yet. <laughs> We pulled it off, didn't we? We pulled it off, didn't we? And if you think this was easy, you're crazy. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I believe they have had time to get down. I want you all to watch the monitors here in the studio, and those of you at home, it's not over now, because I believe that Tom Atkins has a little word for us. We switch you now to our cameras outside the WLW studios where Pauline and Harry are about to leave for the reception. From here, Pauline and Harry will be whisked to the lookout house in Covington, Kentucky. <laughs> Afternoon, about five o'clock, some 400 guests will gather to wish them well. Although their honeymoon plans have been kept secret, my information sources indicate they will fly to Chickasaw, Oklahoma. When they return, Harry will consider one of the many business opportunities that have been given to him as an opportunity to feather his nest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the story behind the story here today may be that Paul Dixon has finally cracked up. <laughs> this is Tom Atkins reporting from the garden area of this chicken wedding. Good morning. Vivian Delacchiesa went. Uh, uh, I say, I don't know where Vivian, uh, Rosemary Kelly. Rosemary, come on. Sweetie, thank you. thanks for helping us out today. And Bob, really, next time you come on the show, you say, you sure? Uh, uh, Vivian Delacchiesa, I don't know where Vivian is. She's gone. But to all of you, you were great. And those of you at home, I hope you enjoyed our little get together. It was given in a spirit of fun, and I'm sure you accept it that way. Finally, the chickens are married. Goodbye. God bless you. Have a real good day. Goodbye, everybody. See you all at the Lookout House tonight. Here's extremists say there can be no compromise. Unknown to the highest office in the country. 
It began on a popular online chat site where Diana Falzone, a former Maxim Mother... A year of firsts for presidential candidates, a phenomenon that has taken even seasoned political analysts by surprise. A growing grassroots movement born on the internet to elect a virtual unknown to the highest office in the country. It began on a popular online chat site where Diana Falzone, a former Maxim model, hosts a weekly talk show. It all started as a joke. Somebody called in and said, hey, I've got this great friend who could be president. And I thought, you know what, we have access to a lot of people, so why not see if we can make it happen? But no one could have anticipated what happened next. What began as a joke turned into a groundswell of popular support for a candidate nobody had ever heard of. All of a sudden, literally thousands of people were chatting and texting in to support this random person who they didn't even know for president. And I thought, what have we started here? What they had started was what political analysts are That's now calling boss. a massive nationwide hey, look political at that. movement. That's a big one. We may be witnessing an historically unprecedented situation where an unknown candidate uh, poses a, a tangible threat to Republican and Democratic candidates in this contest. Across the country, people from all walks of life are making an extraordinary show of support for a candidate who, so far, no one has ever seen. But you ladies, who are you voting for? Would you like me to show you? Sure. Oh, Diana Falzone. Hello, Diana. Hello, Diana. Hello, Diana. Hello, Diana. Looks like this is one candidate who's coming up from behind. For Channel 3 News, I'm Colleen Hayes.
August 26, 1943, a mocked German village has been erected at Fort Lewis, Washington for the purpose of training the 324th Infantry. It was built to represent a small German town, and here are members of the 1st Platoon of Company B going through there. From Fort Lewis, it was down to the Louisiana Swamp in Shreesport for the uh, uh, maneuvers, and from there, a trip up to Camp Phillips, Kansas, and Salina. I Company uh, lined up in front of 3rd Battalion headquarters. The, uh, we're getting prepared to go overseas at this point, and the last training period was very intensive. The question was where we were going to go. Were we going to go to Japan or to Europe? The key question would be answered when we saw which way the train was going. This was inside the barracks at Phillips just before the division packed up and left. And packing barracks bags and duffel bags were on the way to the train, and we ended up at uh, Camp Miles Standish in Massachusetts, and we knew that we were going to Europe. The uh, local girls came over from the USO to uh, have a uh, dance with the uh, GIs from 324th before we uh, left for the port of embarkation in Boston Harbor. This was a short trip of about 20 miles from Taunton, Massachusetts. When we got to the Boston port, we loaded right on to the ships. That's uh, Sam Adler of I Company, uh, USS General Gordon, it was a Coast Guard ship, and we had a fairly uneventful trip over to France, and as the arrow points out, we landed in Cherbourg, we were the first troops to land in Cherbourg from the States. Cherbourg was a mess, the uh, uh, port had been completely destroyed, and the ships couldn't come in, uh, and because of that, we climbed down off the side of the ship and loaded into uh, the barges that were available that made their way to the shore. There's the, uh, the barge being loaded up with the troops and got into the shore where we loaded on to these uh, army trucks and went to Valone, France, uh, again at a short distance, as pointed out on the map, from Cherbourg itself. We spent three weeks there in comparative luxury in those pup tents. Uh, again, a little bit more orientation, a little bit more training, and then most of us uh, loaded on for the trip to Looneyville, France, going on the 40 and 8 box cars. Uh, these were meant for eight horses or 40 men, and we wished that they cleaned them out from the horses before they put them in it. This was our first combat experience. That set the valley to roll. What was happening with the new division? We were somewhere between Looneyville and the magical village where we started out at Epimoneal. That's the, the church and the monument for the dead French soldiers from World War I and II, and the city hall. We didn't spend too much time admiring this when we came through at night, taking over the positions for this 79th Division. But then one of the worst artillery bombardments of the war, when the Germans recognized that troops were leaving, leaving other troops coming in. This is what was left of much of Evanil after the artillery barrage. Uh, we were stationed outside Evermanil on to the east of it. Uh, here's some people from headquarters of 3rd Battalion trying to get out of the mud. We were very lucky while we were there. We were allowed to go in for showers uh, and get cleaned up, get the loused. And here's some pictures of guys from the 324th Infantry. Uh, this only happened not very frequently, maybe just about once a month where we could get cleaned up well. Uh, there's some close-ups of some faces here. Hopefully you'll see yourself or someone you can know. Very early in the morning, about 7 o'clock on November 13th, uh, turned out to be the time of the, of the first attack. And from high companies, point of view, we were in battalion reserve, and we were committed when the 3rd Battalion was held up by a G. 
Jerry machine gun replacement. The first platoon of I Company was sent around to the left flank and up over the hill to take the machine gun. And immediately, uh, three men were killed and six others were wounded. And we recognized then uh, very vividly that the future, what the future might be like and the hard times ahead. Yeah. Sergeant Fletcher uh, was able to finally take out the uh, machine gun emplacement with a bazooka, and we moved on into the uh, woods east of, of the, the battle itself at that point. Still getting cleaned up, and we're taking advantage of the time while they're doing this to mention a little bit about what the plan of attack was. The, uh, Troops moved uh, through uh, Zeus, which was almost completely uh, destroyed, uh, and uh, it was mostly uh, initially on foot rather than being mechanized at that point. You get a feeling for the uh, mud and the uh, living conditions at the time. This was the uh, first attack, as said, taken place in early November, and there was already snow in the ground and it turned out to be the coldest winter in 50 years. This is just east of Dr. Neal in terms of where our positions were. And going across that hill over towards the trees where the first attack took place. After the attack uh, later that day, we moved into the woods shown over to the right. Spent the evening, spent the night there before we moved off again on the, on the, the next day. Uh, this is uh, what's left of Zeus, and this is what Zeus looks like now. Much of it's been uh, rebuilt. As you can see, this from there we moved on into Avacourt, which you may remember in terms of the uh, that's a town hall uh, 40 years ago, and here's another picture of what it looks like a year or so back. Uh, also, uh, there was a lot of activity down near the train station, and there is a uh, picture of the train station. Tracks are right behind there in Avacourt. The railroad bed was the only road clear to mines. Uh, from there we uh, picked up some prisoners. This particular scenery is indicating some prisoners of war that were put to work in help constructing uh, uh, roads. In many cases, the prisoners seemed to be happy to be captured because as far as they were concerned, the war was over and it turned out that many of them were sent back to the States months or even a year before many of the rest of us got back. The, uh, while we're watching them constructing uh, the road, I might want to make a few comments in terms of the, uh, on the road to Saarburg, the uh, number of Alsacian villages that were passed through and recall that the villages looked had the same houses that had been there it seems for hundreds of years and reviewing the thing more recently uh, found that, that uh, most of the houses were still there there were a few new ones but the major difference was uh, instead of the uh, animal manure piles in front of the houses, those are gone and they're replaced by streets now and small cars. Here we are in, here we are in Saarburg. The old warehouses we went through during the war are gone now and there is a French army post there. The rest of the town looks pretty much the same. Second battalion of the 324th mounted tanks and joined the second French army in taking Strasbourg. This tank was knocked out in the Fallsburg area and has been preserved as a monument to the GIs and French soldiers who fought here on the way to Strasbourg. While uh, 
photographing the tank, we met a German civilian who was interested in history, and he said that this was a German tank. Uh, I said, no, it was an American tank. That's what I told you, he said. It's a Sherman. Our own 2nd Battalion liberated Severin and went on to become the first American troops to reach the Rhine River and the first to fire across the Rhine into the enemy installations. Here we are in Aachen, France. The, uh, originally, uh, we were outside the town. This was right in the middle of the marginal line, and we stayed a day or two in the marginal line and then came back into the village. We were in divisional uh, reserve, and this is the 324th Infantry uh, Line Companies and the support troops going through Aachen, as usual try to have two lines of troops on either side of the road with a decent interval. And the time is now early December, lots of snow, the weather is extremely cold. Every time we got an issue of new clothes, instead of exchanging the old ones, we'd keep them both. So it was very common for everybody to be wearing two or three pairs of pants, a couple of sweaters, a couple of jackets, an overcoat clothes and top of clothes and attempt to keep warm. There's a church in the middle of the village, and we were billeted build across the street from that. It was quite common when you would get into a town and being able to stay indoors, which was very luxurious. What you do normally is to nail up things, blankets over the, uh, the windows to keep a light from showing from the outside, and then See if you could get a wine bottle and fill it up with gasoline with a wick and with the light on and keeping out of the cold and wind it was just a, a luxurious situation comparing to being outside in a normal fashion the, uh, we we're, were lucky when we rode the trucks uh, but normally we weren't uh, that fortunate and the line companies did mostly walk